I wanted to talk about living consciously. And then as I started to, to put this together about living consciously, I thought, well, you know, in a sense, you know, this is Southern California, so we're the hip slick and cool of the nation, probably of the world. You know, we're maybe not the jet setters of the world, but we have some. But we're the hip slick and cool of the country, Southern California. This is, uh, you know, it's like we set the pace for everybody else. You know, this is, this is it. Each of us, really, in our own way, is a swinger. Swingers are people who are on the circumference of life. They're on the surface of life. They're on the outer edge of life. And in a sense, we're all that way. We feel good, then we feel bad. We feel happy, but then we feel dejected. We feel affection, but then we feel its opposite. And isn't it funny how the opposite of, of affection is like, well, what is that? It's a strange thing. It's not something that we can easily identify, easily label. Is it? The opposite of affection. But it is something that is negative, and it is something that we do experience generally on the heels of affection. So we could call it disliking. This is, all these things I've just talked about, this is mechanical life. It's mechanical life in a nutshell. It's what it's like to be mechanical. What is it like to be mechanical? Well, it's like being a swinger. Swinging from here to here. Swinging from liking to disliking. Swinging from happy to sad. Swinging from feeling good than feeling bad. So that's what mechanical life is like. It's like living in the swing of the pendulum of life. Life is a pendulum. Birth and death. Night and day. Hot and cold. Up and down. Back and forth. In and out. Left and right. Life is a pendulum. Everywhere we look, it's all made up of opposites. So what's wrong with that? I had this conversation with someone the other day. They were insisting on seeing things in opposites. I wasn't talking about opposites, but they couldn't see any other way. They were not able to hear what I was saying. Hopefully you will. As long as you do this, you live in the swing of the pendulum of life, you'll lose what you gain. So here we go. We swing over here. We make all this progress. We stop and we start to move back. And we swing over here and all the distance and all the progress that we gained here, we now gobble that up and go back over here. And then all the progress that we gained here, we now turn and we gobble that up and we go back over here. And so in life, we pretty much stay the same. Oh, that's not true. How could you say that? Everything's different. Really like what? Well, computers, electric lights, cars, uh, planes, jet planes now. It's not like the Wright brothers. Well, yeah, that's all different. But what is the difference between man then and man now? Oh, he can get here and there faster. He's got jet planes now instead of the Wright Brothers planes and stuff like that. Yes, but what is the difference in man internally? Well, he's more civilized now. Oh, really? Have you been to Iraq lately? Get a good look at what civilized man is doing. Or go about any place in the world. Just about any place in the world. Plunk yourself down and take a look around and see what civilized man is doing to civilized man. Still cracking each other's skulls. Why? You've got something I want. You don't agree with me. You don't believe what I believe. So therefore, you need your skull cracked. That'll help you to understand. Does it help anybody to understand? No. Do we keep doing it? Yes. Why? Because we haven't learned. History repeats itself because we don't learn. We're constantly losing what we've gained. Always remaining the same. When I say always remaining the same, I don't mean that our fashions don't change. I don't mean that our cars and our houses, our dresses, our bodies don't change. What I mean is our level of being doesn't change. Who we really are. See, being is who you really are. Who you really are doesn't change. Oh, that's not true. It changes. Oh, yes, you're right. It does change. First you're happy, then you're sad. Then you like it, then you don't like it. You call that change. I call that wobbling. I call that swinging. I call that the pendulum. Staying in the same place, but just swinging from here to there. It's not change. I'm talking about deep interchange of being who you are. Well, that's not possible. Well, no, that's not possible in this life, but it is possible in this work. One moment we love, the next moment we hate. One moment we feel enthusiasm and then we feel dejected. Then let's look at it another way. Well, you know, here we are, we're in the work. One moment we think we're fine. The next moment, oh, we're just a mess. We're never going to make it. Does this sound familiar? Yes. Good. At least you're being honest enough with yourself and sincere enough with yourself to see that you are on the swing of the pendulum of life. You're in it. It's dragging you back and forth. It's the law of the pendulum which causes winter to follow summer. Somehow, 
We need to be not so much under this law. This is really what we're doing in this work. We're trying to escape from being under the influence of this law. I'm not saying we can be free from it. Maybe we can, but right now we want to try and be not so much under its influence. You know, there are two phases of the heart. You nurses and nurse practitioners and medical types will understand this. The two phases of the heart, systole and diastole. Systole pumps blood. The heart contracts. Then it pushes out the blood that it collected, pushes it out of the heart, and it pushes it, pumps it through the body. Diastole receives. When it's passive, the heart is on one side of the pendulum. When it's contracted, it's on the other side of the pendulum. Okay? So this is our example. It's when it's contracting, it's driving blood through the body. When it's passive, it's receiving blood. It's letting blood come into the chambers of the heart and fill it. And when they're filled, it contracts and it pumps it out. It's an incredible thing. We have moments of expansion and we have moments of contraction. We have times when things go right and times when things go wrong. But we don't know this. We live our lives as if things are always going to go right or things are always going to go wrong. Well, what is that dependent upon? It depends, it depends upon and solely depends upon one thing. Which side of the pendulum you're on? If you happen to be on the negative side, it's always going to be horrible. It's never going to get any better. I'm never going to make it. I get this all the time from certain people. And then there's the other side. Oh, I'm doing so well. The imaginary side. Oh, I'm doing so well. I think I'm ready to ascend. Oh, yes. I, Mr. Gurdjieff, move over. I'm man number eight now. You know, so man number eight. What do you mean? I thought there were only seven. Yes. Well, I just created a new one because I'm so far above it. You know, it's like we're crazy. We're totally insane. The pendulum of emotions swings to and fro. But we can make use of this in the work. When we're passive, like the heart, what is the heart doing when it's passive? It's collecting. What is it collecting? It's collecting the blood. It's allowing its chambers to be filled up. It's ordering things. It's in a passive stage, but it's arranging and ordering. For what? For the next stage, the contraction stage, when it pushes it all out. It's taking what's going to go back and it's pushing it one way and it's taking something else and it's pushing it another way. It's arranging it. It's ordering it so that everything goes where it's supposed to go and gets what it's supposed to get and gives what it's supposed to give. Of course, this is a, a novice example. You know, a doctor would be able to wow you with details that you wouldn't understand and you'd get to go, wow, he sure is smart. And I'm dumb, so. I don't get to wow you with any details. I just get to tell you the basics. This is just the basic layman's understanding of it. But my purpose is not to show you how smart I am and how much I know about the heart. My purpose is to use this as an example to see how we work, how this machine works, and how we can make use of how we work. How the pendulum swing works and how we can make use of what we consider to be a passive or negative part of the pendulum swing. That's what I want to do. When we're passive, we can put things in order. We can arrange things properly. We can consult observing I before moving forward again. What does this mean? What is the actual practical application of this? That's what, when I say, what does this mean? I mean, what is the actual practical application of this in your everyday life? Well, the application of it in my life is when I'm passive, I'm thinking about, I'm going over what happened. I'm holding it next to the standard that the work has set and saying, where did it measure up? Where did it not measure up? How can I make it measure up? How can I improve this? So when I go back out, when the pendulum swings the other way and I go back out, how will I do it differently? How will I do it better? How will I be able to produce more of what it is the work wants me to produce? More force, more awareness, more light, more energy. How will I do that? This is what we can do in the passive stage of our pendulum swing. We can basically collect ourselves. That's really what the heart is doing. It's collecting itself. It's collecting the blood. That's what we can be doing. We can be collecting ourselves. We can be ordering things. We can be arranging things. We can be looking at things. We can de be dispassionately observing without criticism, just simply observing. If we can bring consciousness to both sides in every center, in every part of every center, then we can begin to see things from two points of view. Right now, this is almost unheard of for us. Being able to see things from two points of view is very difficult. We can see things 
from one point of view or another point of view. And we have to flit back and forth very quickly, like a flea hopping from a frying pan, from the frying pan into the fire and from the fire back into the frying pan. We have to do it very quickly, and it gives the illusion of having two points of view. But actually, we only have one point of view, and then we have one point of view, and then one point of view, and one point of view. And if you do it fast enough, it looks like two points of view, but it's not. So right now, we're not capable of two points of view. Now, some people are not going to like that. Some people are going to object to that, which is fine, because some people object for a living. In other words, they don't know they're living unless they're objecting. So they object for a living. It's how they know they're alive, by objecting. Uh, that's not the way it is. It's not the, no, I don't think it's that. No, I don't think so. That's what affirms them. That's where they say, this is where it stops and I start. Their objection is their definition of themselves. You know, if you find that you are that person, we all are. We all define ourselves like this. And it's just something to observe, that's all. Seeing yourself from two points of view, seeing other people from two points of view, basically civilizes your internal world. Well, how does it do that? How does it, if you think about your internal world, it's really uncivilized. It's barbaric. It's savage. There are places you've never been in there. There are no roads. It's all jungle overgrown. I watched part of King Kong the other day, the movie King Kong. Part of it. When I say part of it, I mean I couldn't watch all of it. They were going to kill King Kong. Can you believe that? This is not what I want my life to be about. This is not what I want to be putting into my head, and into my heart, and into my consciousness. This isn't what I want. This is what I, I don't, I don't want to feed on this. I don't go out and eat things I find in the gutter. Well, you don't see this very often. I think I'll eat that. No. You know, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to just consume anything that somebody offers you. Somebody offers you something doesn't mean you have to eat it. That's what we're doing, you see, when we're taking in impressions. You're watching a movie. You're taking in impressions. How many impressions are you taking in? Well, I've heard it's 10 million bits of information per second. Uh, that's a lot. And how much of that is being screened? Not a percent. It's just being absorbed unconsciously. Not even a percent of that. Not even one percent of that is being screened. That's like going somewhere and somebody's serving you a plate of whatever and you just eat it. That's not a good idea. I turned King Kong off. I don't care how it ends. I know how it ends. It ends how all things end in this life. It ends up the way of all flesh. Dead. I don't have time for dead. I need to be working on now, being alive now, not being dead later, because dead later means dead now. If you're working on being dead later, you're dead now. If you're dead now, what's the point? Well, the point is wake up, come alive. Here we are, having an opportunity to civilize our internal world. That's what we were talking about, the King Kong jungle, you know, this, these prehistoric beasts, these insects, it was pretty graphic. This is not a commercial for King Kong. Don't run out and see it. You get this? I don't want to go where the world is going. Do you? If you do, what are you doing here? Because this place is not going where the world is going. We're going in a different direction. In fact, I would have to say the opposite direction. The reverse of where the world is going. The world is going full speed ahead and we're backpedaling. Oh no, I don't think so. We're heading inward. We're retreating from it. Not in fear. But we're heading toward the light because there isn't any light out there on the horizon. There's artificial light, but when you get there, there won't be any power. The lights will go out and you'll be standing there in the dark wondering what happened. But the source of light inside of you, if you move toward that, then you've accomplished something because that light will never go out, the light of consciousness. And so this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to civilize our internal world, inhabiting our dark, barbaric side with more conscious thoughts, with work memory. What does that mean? Well, remembering that we are sleeping machines. Remembering that we're savages, essentially. That we're that far from cracking skulls. For the people who can't see how that far is, it's about a quarter of an inch, about how far that is from cracking skulls. It's not very far. How often and how quickly and how easily can you flare? Can your temper flare? If anybody knows you, they know how to make you flare. Well, what do you mean they know how to make me flare? Right, you're a machine. They know how to trip your trigger and make you angry. Wow, that's pretty bad. Right, and that's where we live. That's pretty bad. So we want to develop some memory there so that that doesn't happen so easily. 
This enables us to return on the swing with something prepared to nourish us, just as the heart feeds the body. We've got to see the dark and the light side of us together, through consciousness, through the memory, and through work. Well, what does that mean, through work? Well, if you work on yourself, if you observe yourself uncritically, separated from what you're observing, you are developing a memory. You will remember. Well, when this happens, it does that. Once you develop that memory, you then can short-circuit what it does. You can stop it from not right away. So don't expect this to happen right away. You'll observe something for a long time before you can actually begin to stop it. But at first, you can make it less. At first, you can see it maybe an hour after it happened. Then you can see it maybe a half an hour after it happened. Then you can see it 10 minutes after it happened. Then you can see it five minutes after it happened. And then one day, you start to see it while it's happening. You can't do anything about it. You're like watching a movie. You're totally out of control. It's happening, and you're watching it. Oh, my God, look what I'm doing. Oh, my God, look what my hand is doing. Oh, look what this is doing. Look what that is doing. But you can't stop it. And then one day, you become aware of it before it actually happens. You realize that it gets this little tick when it's going to happen, and you feel the tick, and you go, oh, no. Oh, I'm not going there. And you stop. You make inner stop, and you stop everything. You just freeze in place, like playing musical chairs. So it's like that. You make inner stop. You won't let it happen. And we begin to do in a work sense. We can't do in life because life is doing us, but we begin to do in a work sense. We begin to struggle against our mechanical tendencies. The motion of the pendulum is really circular, but it's limited by our linear perception so that it appears to be opposites in two dimensions. If you look at the Earth, we're a ball. In three dimensions, it's a sphere. In two dimensions, it's a circle. Tilt that and you'll see all it is is a line with opposites. This end and this end. That's our problem. Our problem isn't that the world is opposites. Our problem is that the way we see it is like a line with this end and the opposite end instead of like the circle that it actually is. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Winter, spring, summer, fall. It's a circle. It's not opposites. It's a circle. And you can see it that way. It takes effort to see it that way. It takes consciousness. It takes work to see it that way. But you can see it that way. And this kind of work produces good results and work memory. When you travel life circle, you begin to see fewer and fewer contradictions. <laughs> what that means is you have increased your consciousness. This work is about increasing your consciousness, raising your level of being, your level of beingness, your level of areness, your level of isness. This is what I are. This is what I is. This is what I am. This is what I am being. This is my being, my beingness, raising that so that you are being something different from what life made you. Life made you a barbaric savage. Look at the jungle. It's not a nice place. Do you know that rats will go into a little bird nest and eat the babies before they even have feathers or anything? They don't care at all. Did you know that? They don't even care. Well, they got babies of their own. They don't care. They, don't have, they have absolutely no feelings about it. Oh, these poor little babies, I can't eat them, even though I'm really hungry. No, they don't see it that way. They don't care. They have no consciousness because life made them without consciousness. Guess what? We don't have much more, especially as long as our babies are in the grocery store, the supermarket, and they're packaged properly. What is veal? I rest my case. Calves liver. You know, it goes on and on and on. People who argue whether this is right or that's right are people who are in the illusion of the pendulum. They're in the illusion of seeing the circle as a line, opposites. They're in the illusion of the pendulum. Well, this is right. No, that's right. No, this is right. No, that's right. But people who have a broader perspective, who have worked on their consciousness, their level of being, and raised it so that they can see above the line, so that they can see that it's a circle, they don't see contradictions. They don't see opposites. They see a circle. They see all things on that circle or many things on that circle and they can move around the circle. They may not be able to be aware of the entire circle all at once, but they can be aware that this is a circle and that these things are connected 
and these things follow each other, not that they're opposites. This work is a way to reconcile the opposites in you, to reach a new place in which the opposites do not control you. This is all about control, people. Getting some control over our own lives. Well, but well, I have control over my life. You think you do. You think you have control over your life until there's an earthquake. You think you have control over your life until there's a hurricane. You think you have control over your life until there's a tornado. You think you have control over your life until somebody close to you dies. You think you have control over your life until the doctor tells you you have terminal cancer. You think you have control over your life. But it's an illusion. You have no control. You can't make any of those things happen or not happen. You have no control. Now, there is a place where you can get some control, but it's not out there. It's not on the circumference of life. It's not in the illusion of the pendulum, the opposites. It's internal. It's in being. It's in the ability to raise your level of being and perceive things differently. If we're on the pendulum, all thoughts and feelings lie in opposites. This is how our world of war and strife is carried on. How do they do it? How do they set up a place called the United Nations for Peace and then sit and decide who to beat up next. They sit there and they decide who's going to get what. Who in the rest of the world, the little guys, are going to get what? The big guys all decide what the little guys are going to be allowed to have. Well, we can have nuclear weapons, but you can't. And now we got some little guys going, oh, yeah, well, we're going to have nuclear weapons anyway, but they'll be dirty, tough. Oh, what are we going to do about them? And the big guys get together and decide what to do about the little guys who are doing what the big guys don't want them to do. That's about peace. Yeah, that's how we're going to make peace. We're going to crush those little guys before they have a chance to be big guys. That's what the world's been doing forever. It doesn't work. Violence leads to violence. It doesn't work. People who argue whether this is right or that's right are in the illusion of the pendulum. Remember that? See that? There's no harmony produced in that. I knock you down, then you knock me down. One side produces the other. What produced me knocking you down? Well, you knocked me down. What produced you knocking me down? Well, you knocked me down. Talk about a perpetual motion machine, there it is. It's a perpetual motion machine. It's a pendulum, it's back and forth, a perpetual motion machine. Everybody's been trying to invent what's already there. But you can stop it in yourself. You do many things that you don't include, that you don't accept in the general sense of yourself. What does that mean? It means you have a lot of contradictions. It means you say one thing and do another quite regularly and are not aware of it. That's what it means. It means you have a lot that you do not include in your general sense of yourself. You don't include in your gen general sense of yourself that you're a parrot that goes around repeating the same thing over and over and over again so that people know what you're going to say next. You don't include that in your sense of yourself. Why? Well, that's unflattering to my pride and vanity. That's why. And I'm not a parrot. I just say what I think is important. And other people are stupid. Right. It's always other people are stupid, isn't it? It's never me. It's always other people. So it's about these things that we don't include, that we don't accept in our general sense of ourselves. By observing ourselves uncritically, we can go round the whole circle of our being and start to see all of it. Start to see what liars we are. Start to see what parrots we are. Start to see what brown noses we are. Start to see what yes men we are. Start to see how belligerent we can be. Start to see all of that stuff. Well, right now we can't see it. We can't include that because we're so critical of it. But as we begin to observe uncritically and see the full circle of our being, we start to see it all. We start to let light into all of it. Oh, we let light in? Yes, we let light in. The light of consciousness so that these things become vis visible and knowable. So these things become observable with enough light. Oh, wow. I don't think I'd like that. That's because you're being critical. If you don't think you'd like that, it's because you're being critical of what you think you'll see. But don't be critical of what you think you'll see. Just let it be. Just take it all in as part of the full circle. But I don't like winter. Yes, but it's part of the circle and it's going to come around. But I don't like it. Well, then fine. Poke your eyes out with chopsticks. But I don't like that. Well, you, you know, we can make our lives about what we don't like. Or we can start to make our lives about accepting what's so. All of what's so not just what we like. And that takes a change in the level of being. It won't happen because we say, that's what I want to happen. We've actually got to change our level of being. Doing this will destroy false personality. You will no longer be the same person you imagined that you were. You know, imagination always lies. 
never tells her the truth. It always lies, always lies. Because if it wasn't lying, it wouldn't be imagination. It would be the truth. It would be what's so. But imagination never says what's so. It always says what should be so, what we would like to be so, but not what is so. We recently got a taste of this with the bathing suit videos. <laughs> I still have to giggle at this. The bathing suit videos. You know, we did these videos where people were just a bathing suit. And then took a, we took a video camera and we just videoed them in the bathing suit, videoed their body. Oh my gosh. You would think that they were going to the rack. You know, you would think they're going to the cross. Oh, this is, so, you're horrible. This is horrible. Look, just observe this uncritically. But it's cellulite. It's fat. It's gross. It's floppy. It's flappy. It's soft. It's this. It's pasty. It's blah, 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 blah. There's too much here and not enough there. Oh, what happened? Well, what happened is life. Oh, but it shouldn't be that way. Imagination. Imagination comes crashing head on with the reality of the video. I don't look like that. Yes, you do. The camera makes me look. They say video adds 10 pounds to you. <laughs> yes, but there's 30 pounds there. <laughs> oh, well, well, the yeah, it's a bad camera, man. Well, you were using a wide angle lens or something, man. You added all that weight to me. I don't look like that. Imagination is very powerful. It takes a lot of being to go against imagination. All of you has got to be included in yourself, in your consciousness of yourself. Or else you have no real knowledge of yourself. You'll pretend constantly being influenced by one little eye at a time. Isn't that really what it's about? Isn't that really what the videos are about? You get to pretend that you're not what you are because you let one little eye at a time come to the top and say what it thinks. Oh, I think you look good. Oh, for your age, you really look good. You know, isn't that what we do? Mm -hmm. Well, for my age. <laughs> it's like, well, for my age, and considering my age and my weight and the miles on this body and other people, you know, you look at other guys, they all have body by Budweiser. I have body by Budweiser light, you know. It's like, <laughs> we're so much better, you know. We can always find somebody fatter. We can always find somebody uglier. We can always find somebody with a bigger gut. We can always find somebody with a wider butt. We can always find somebody who we can look down on. Isn't that great? So we get to stay the same and never change. Wow! How smart is that? Well, that's pretty smart if that's all you want out of life. It is. That's the way to go if that's all you want out of life. But if you want something more, well, then it's pretty dumb. You'll no longer be the same person you imagined. Could you stand that? Could you stand being different? You know, the truth is you couldn't. That's the truth about you. Why you are the way you are is because you're constantly justifying what you are. You don't want to change. You want to be right the way you are. But it's impossible to be right the way you are and to have something more. Because to be right the way you are, you have to have what you have. Oh, well, isn't there another way? Yes, there is another way. It's called the work. Oh, stop saying that word keeps using four-letter words. Stop that. All eyes must be included in the feeling of yourself. This dissolves the Pharisee in you. It's always pretending. The work calls this Pharisee the false personality, where you think you're right, where you feel yourself better than others. Well, oh, I, don't, I don't do that. <laughs> right. Just a little tiny peek uncritically at yourself will show you that you are populated by Pharisees. All the cities and towns, all the boroughs, all the villages are all populated inside you by Pharisees. They're running the show. Why are human relationships so difficult? Well, human relationships are not difficult. Really? So you get along with everybody. Well, you can get along with everybody that's easy to get along with. And some people you just can't get along with. Some people are just like so obstinate and so arrogant, so ignorant, and so horrible that nobody could get along with them. So you do have problems then. Well, yes, but, but it's not my problem, it's the people. Oh, yes. So it's really, you're the same as everybody else. You're perfect, and it's the other people who screw it up. I'm not going to change that. It's a self-justification. We're right back to the same thing. Ospensky said, they are so difficult because two entirely invented people, two entirely pretense people, try to come together. Well, that's going to be difficult. Ospensky also said, nothing in life is what it pretends to be. <laughs> We're like chameleons. 
And we don't tell the truth about it. We don't see it. We lie about it. We justify it. We gloss over it. But we're like chameleons. We take the color of wherever we are so that we blend in. The good householder does what he has to do from duty in life. He does not believe in life, nor does he believe that it leads anywhere. This life doesn't lead anywhere. You die. Your body rots. It's eaten by bacteria, bugs, insects, whatever. That's it. That's where this life leads. Now, there is another way that actually does lead somewhere, but it is not the way that this life leads. That's what this work is about. That's what this way is about. This way is about harmonizing all of the eyes inside of us so that we can see the full circle of our being and allow it to work harmoniously. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Though they appear to be opposites, they work together and give each other what they need to continue.